Hey guys, today I am introducing you to the best samosas or samosa in England. Trust me, if you've eaten as many as I've had, you will agree. For those that don't know what a samosa is, it's a popular South Asian fried pastry with a savoury filling, including ingredients such as spiced potatoes and peas. It's typically triangular or cone shaped and are often accompanied with some chutney. But today I am going to show you some samosas I've brought from an Asian sweet shop. And they have two options, vegetable or meat. fillings. The vegetable samosa consists of soft mushy potatoes and broad beans. I know what you're thinking, normally you see peas but not here, these guys are different. That's it, potatoes and broad beans seasoned with the right amount of spice, no weird ingredients. The filling is so soft and pillowy it's so satisfying and comforting. The meat samosa consists of keema or minced meat with broad beans and that's it. I don't know the specific spices and aromatics added but let me tell you it tastes perfect. It's a subtle spiced flavour and the flavours are spot on. Not too spicy, not too salty or greasy. The meat is soft, crumbly and flavourful. They are both equally so Moorish, addictive and delicious. The fillings are so full, it's packed, they are so generous with it. Have you ever had a meat samosa but you bite into it and it's basically a vegetable one with bits of meat in it? Like it's got potato with some keema basically. It's not like that here. When you ask for meat samosa, it's keema and no potatoes. They've got it right, trust me. People struggle to pick which they like more veg or meat. Even the meat lovers are converted to being vegetable samosa fans. The pastry. The pastry is so hard to get right. In my opinion, harder than the filling to get right. And they have it right. It's thin, flaky, crispy, not greasy, not thick, not stodgy. It's not the doughy thick pastry and it's not the spring roll pastry. It's authentic and it's the best pastry for samosas. It's accompanied with an onion chutney. It's a watery, vinegary, sharp chutney, but it works. The acidity cuts through the greasiness and it eliminates that fatty feeling when you eat fried food. Pour it into the samosa or break up your samosa and pour chutney over it, samosa chad style. It's honestly so good. Have it plain or break it up. Load it with yogurt, chutney, chickpeas, masala, spices, tamarind sauce, pomegranate, crunchy stuff and make a samosa chat out of it. This is the best samosa you can buy to make a chat with. We drive 45 minutes to buy them. We are real fans. Honestly, we can't get enough. These guys make batches and batches all day long. If you're going to buy some samosa from them, they're most likely still hot, freshly fried or at least warm. We are going to do a little comparison with some samosa we randomly bought at a busy and popular Asian restaurant in Manchester. We bought one veg and one meat. Remember the type of pastry I mentioned earlier, that thick, stodgy, doughy type? This is the one. The type where it leaves your samosa cravings unsatisfied. The size is obviously smaller, 
the fillings are less packed and most importantly the flavours are just not there. Honestly I wasn't interested after the first bite, it was too salty. The spices aren't right. Sometimes less is more, when there is too much it's just overpowering and I feel like a smosa is just a simple tasty snack and the fillings should not be overdone with spices. Remember when I said earlier about meat samosas often having potato in and then small amounts of meat? This is a good example. It was hard to tell which was the meat and which was the veggie samosa here. These samosa were priced at £2.60 for two. That's one thirty each. And my favourite samosas, how much would you pay for them? They're £1 each. I can remember when they were 60 pence. They have increased in 10 pence increments over the years and now priced at one pound. In my opinion, it's still worth it if you compare to what its competitors produce. For example, aside from the difference in pastry and the vast difference in filling and flavor, look at the weight of my favorite samosas, which are both over 100 grams. And compare that to the weight of the others we bought, both under 80 grams. My favourite ones are better in every way, especially value for money. So this is why I don't buy any samosa other than from these guys. Okay, so these samosa are from the Manchester Sweet Centre in Blackburn. There's only one branch, don't be confused by their name, they aren't based in Manchester. These guys are local heroes of their samosas. Everyone in this town and even surrounding towns know them and buys bags and bags full. So overall, the pastry has the perfect crunch. Look at it. You can't even see any oiliness on it. Filling. Simple, tasty, Moorish, not too spicy. Generous amount, not too salty. I can't stress enough man, just try them. They have been the best for years. Unfortunately, there aren't any other samosa that remotely compares, or at least in close vicinity. A subpar samosa is just far too common. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have no affiliations with the business. I am just a real fan of their samosas and would love to share my samosa feelings. I hope you can try them out yourselves and let me know what you think. Drop me a comment if you have a favorite samosa spot you would like to share. Honestly, I'm so confident that you guys would agree I would challenge anyone that can bring me a better samosa. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one!